Hello everyone, this is Robert, and in this video I'm going to show you a couple of these uh, 3D printed tools that I made for assisting in the assembly and disassembly of the new hub motor for my Be The Weight Combat Robot Psychotic Break version 3. So, let's go take a look at these. Okay, so what's the problem we're trying to solve here? Well, this is the old version of the hub motor, and you can see it has this magnet ring pressed into the backside right here. Um, these are some of the free magnet rings that I'm using. They start out their life as this motor, and then I kind of cut everything up, and I end up with these. These are a tight press fit, I guess a friction fit to be precise, inside this ring. And once it goes in there, I might need to be able to get it back out again. So I have these four holes drilled and tapped on the face, and I can just insert a 632 screw into them, and I can screw that and just kind of keep going around, and it will eventually press this out. Couple issues here. One, you're never pressing it uniformly. You're always kind of doing one, 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 and it's going to kind of wobble itself out, and that is not good for a friction fit. Secondly, the spacing is a little bit more in than I would like, so instead of hitting this outer ring, um, which is the aluminum piece, it's actually hitting a little bit on the inside, and it's kind of damaging the magnets a little bit. You can maybe see it on one of these rings. It's just not really pressing in the dead middle, so we need Need to correct that with the next version of the hub which is this one. Here is the new version 3 of the hub motor and you can see I've moved these four holes out a little bit further so they're no longer hitting the magnets they're hitting more on the outside of the ring. I actually looked at the actual ring and centered them right on the middle of that. But we still have the issue of these four screw holes that are going to do the wobble dance so what I did is I 3D printed these two pieces. This one has dowel pins in it, so what I can do is just set this on there like that, align my dowel pins inside these holes, and then just press out that from down below. You can kind of see the pins acting right there. Really, really, really simple stuff. Now, how do you get the ring in there to begin with? Well, I have this little guy for that. You can just take the ring, shove it nicely on there, Take our little stand, mount it upside down, ooh, dual function, and then we can actually just align this with that inner hole. That lines it up. Now we know that we're perpendicular, and you can just press that into place. This is still a very tight friction fit. I guess I can do it by hand, almost all the way. Uh, let's bring this over to the arbor press, and I will finish this off. But it has a little shoulder right there that will press this down past this flange, it presses it, um, I think, one or two millimeters down past that. So let me show you that on the Arbor Press. I figured since I would be showing you both steps anyway, I removed the magnet ring just so I could show you it being inserted and then removed once again. And I think this is a good time as any to mention that I started an Instagram account. So check the link down below. Follow me on Instagram. I'm going to be doing a lot more stuff on there rather than making videos lately. So go ahead and check that out. As you can see, it's pretty inconsequential to put the ring in and take it back out again. And if you've ever messed with um, bearings or hub motors like this, you know that this can be a real pain, but these tools make it a lot easier. If this doesn't convince you that 3D printers have uses beyond just cosplay and figurines, I don't know how I'm going to convince you. Otherwise, it is really great for making these um, limited use tools. Um, you know, these will easily outlast the life of something like this simply because it's combat robots and this is going to get destroyed. This is nothing special. This is just 15% infill PLA. These only took eh, maybe a couple hours total to print and they're really useful to have at a competition where maybe there isn't an arbor press or maybe you just don't really have access to tools. It is pretty easy just to do all this by hand and because it lines everything up it's really hard to make a mistake. So you can just kind of press everything in. If that's too difficult, you can just wail on this with a dead blow, something like that. So it's really nice to have in a pinch where you don't have your full shop of tools in front of you. So yeah, 
I'm really pleased with these. Um, they make prototyping a lot easier, and these are obviously going to be coming with me to the event. So anyway, um, thanks for watching. Check out my Facebook page for any updates. And of course, check out my Instagram for any additional updates. I'm working on a new version of Psychotic Break, as well as a brand new, very special Lolo Man, which you might have seen some um, pieces about. So be sure to check that out on Instagram. I'll be posting a lot more of the progress, and then hopefully I will get around to making an overview video. So as always, thanks for watching and see you on Instagram and see you in the next video. Thanks. Special bonus content. I figured someone might ask, why are these holes tapped if they're only used for pressing out the ring? Well, it's actually for mounting a little protective flange on the top. This helps prevent damage to the top of the hub motor as well as protecting the bearing a little bit. And yes, this is gonna be the new color theme of Psychotic Break. It is gonna be bright and bold. So, see ya.